I am here to tell you that it is never too late to start to save for your retirement. I don't care if you're in your 40s. I don't care if you're in your 50s. We are going to work through this together so that you have enough money by the time you hit retirement age. And today, I'm going to take you step by step on how you can save enough money for retirement. Now, I want you to remember this as we go through this process that it is never too late to save for retirement. All you have to do is go through this wealth building process and you will be well on your way to saving enough money for retirement. Retirement is not a game and this is not something where you can just rely on social security. So the time to start is right now. And I want you to take incredible action as we go through this process because I want you to start today. The longer you delay, the worse it is going to get. So we gotta make sure that we start today day when we plan for retirement. So let's get into the steps on how you can save enough money for retirement. So step one is going to be cut out expenses. Now I know most people here are rolling their eyes or tired of hearing people say, save more money, save more money, save more money. But in order to build wealth, you have to be able to cut out expenses. So how do you actually go through this process of cutting back on some things that do not bring you value? Because the most important thing to understand as we go through this is what brings you value and what does not bring you value and you're just spending frivolously on. So what I want you to do is either take out a spreadsheet or a piece of paper and create three columns. In column one, I want you to go through your bank statements and I want you to list out your expenses. I mean, every single expense that you have from your electric bill, to your car payment, to your mortgage, your grocery bills, all the way down to your $9 subscription to your favorite magazine. I want you to have every single category of expenses that you have every month inside that first column. In column two, I want you to really think through this column because what I want you to do is I want you to cut out the things that do not bring you value. So there are three questions that I want you to ask yourself as you go through this. Number one, does this thing bring me value? Does a $800 per month car payment actually bring you value? Or you just have that car payment because you think it's a thing you need to do? Does this Netflix subscription really bring you value? Or is it just something that you do? Do those really bring you value? Or you just do those because you're bored? Because cutting out the things that do not bring you value is incredibly important because it means you can retire that much faster and add more fuel to the fire so that you become financially independent. The second question to ask yourself about these expenses, are you willing to trade a bunch of hours for this specific thing? So say for example, you make $50 an hour at your job and say for example, that you have an $800 per month car payment. Are you willing to work for 16 hours to pay for that car payment? Because that's what it's going to cost you to have that vehicle. The third question I want you to ask yourself is, can I downgrade some of these items and still be happy? So one thing to focus on as you're looking through these expenses is the big three, which is your housing, food, and transportation costs. If you can reduce those three expenses, that will make the largest impact when it comes to your budget. Cutting out coffees and your daily lattes is not gonna make that big of an impact, but what will make a big impact is the big three. Are the kids out of the house? Can you downsize your house? Do you have massive car payments? Can you get a different car that does not have massive car payments so that you can take those extra dollars and put them towards building wealth. What does your grocery bill look like? Do you just spend frivolously on groceries and eating out? Can you reduce that bill so that you have more dollars to put towards your wealth building activities? These are the things that have six figure impacts over the course of your lifetime. And for people who are even younger, they have seven figure impacts. So you've got to make sure that you are looking into the big three. Remember the big three and always consciously think about the big three and how you can reduce some of those costs. Think about your location. If you live in a very expensive area, can you get a similar job in a lower cost of living area so that you can retire faster? Is your time freedom more important than your job in the area that you live in? That is another question I want you to ask as you're going through this expensive exercise. So then in column two, I want you to list out all the expenses that you are going to cut out. And I want you to cut those expenses out, call up the companies, cancel the subscriptions, reduce the car payment, do all of the things that you need to do to cut back on those expenses. And then column three, I want you to have your brand new budget available for you there. And those that's the amount you're going to spend every single month and how much you have left over between those three columns, you're going to take that chunk of money and you are going to start investing those dollars. And it is so important to understand that you cannot retire unless you invest your money. Let me say it again for the people in the back. You cannot retire if you don't invest your money. So you have to be able to invest your money in order to be able to retire because that money needs to compound and to preserve that wealth over time 
you have to have that money invested. It will not be preserved if you do not have that money invested, which leads us to point two, let's set up your investment accounts. So you need to set up your investment accounts now. This is an urgent thing if you are behind on investing. So we need to get them set up because it is never too late. You are gonna be able to do this. I promise you, you will be able to retire, but we have to set up these investment accounts. And I'm gonna give you the order of operations as to which investment accounts you need to open and in one order. The first thing you need to do is if your employer offers a 401k match or an employer match, maybe it's a Roth 401k match, maybe you have a 403b, any of those. If your employer offers a match, that's the first thing you need to do is take advantage of that match. Now, a match is when your employer, for example, may offer 4% if you put 4% into your 401k. That is a 100% rate of return and you cannot get any better returns than that in life. This is free money. Do you like free money? Because I love free money. So you need to make sure that you are taking advantage of your employer's match. That's the first thing. Number two is you want to look into investing in something like a Roth IRA. Now you may have heard the term Roth IRA in the past, but if you don't know what it is, it is a tax advantaged account where you take your money that you've already paid taxes on, money that came from your paycheck, you put it inside of the Roth IRA, the money grows tax-free and you can pull the money out tax-free after age 59 and a half. Now the Roth IRA is an extremely powerful account. Why? Because the growth of that money typically is the majority over time. So a Roth IRA is an amazing account that you can open and have tax-free dollars inside of that account. In addition, the Roth IRA does not have RMDs or required minimum distributions where you have to pull a certain amount of money out every year in retirement, like our next guest does, the 401k. So once you get to the Roth IRA, and if you max out that Roth IRA, which the contribution limits at the time recording this are $6,500 if you're under the age of 50 and $7,500 if you are over the age of 50, then you can move on to the 401k. Now at the 401k level, you can put in $22,500 per year if you are under the age of 50 and you can put an additional $7,500 per year if you are over the age of 50. And you wanna take advantage of those additional contributions if you can. So once you max out that Roth IRA, then move on to the 401k. And if you have enough money to max out your employer contributions, max out your Roth IRA, max out your 401k, and you still have money left over, then a taxable brokerage is absolutely fantastic. Or you can invest in something like real estate as well, where you can accelerate your path to wealth, have appreciation, have cash flow, and have a number of different items in play. Now, where are my favorite places to open up these brokerage accounts? So there are three great places to do this. Vanguard, Fidelity, Charles Schwab are my three favorites, but you can also open one up at M1 Finance, which we will have linked up down below, which is great for ETF investors and the like. Now, what do you invest in inside of these accounts? So my favorite way to invest is to invest in index funds and ETFs. And you can do research to see if those fit your profile. But the way an index fund and ETF works is you are buying a basket of stocks. So say, for example, you buy something like VTSAX. Well, what VTSAX is, is Vanguard's total stock market index fund. What this does is it invests in every single stock inside of the stock market. This is an incredibly powerful way to invest your dollars. In in addition, when you invest in something like VTSAX, you're investing in a really low cost index fund, meaning that fees will absolutely destroy your wealth building ability over time. If you pay a 1% fee or a 2% fee to someone like an advisor, you are giving away a large portion of your wealth. But if you have low cost funds that you were investing in, you can keep a larger portion of your investment portfolio so that you can live on that in retirement. And so investing in something like index funds is incredibly powerful. Now, when we talked about the Roth IRA, when we talked about the 401k, you heard me say, if you're over the age of 50, you can contribute X amount of dollars over. These are called catch-up contributions. So if you are over the age of 50, always take advantage of these catch-up contributions. So you contribute to the Roth IRA, you contribute to your 401k, you have those catch-up contributions available to you, and you can build wealth by getting more dollars into these accounts. The government gives you these catch-up contributions so you can get more dollars into those accounts as you approach retirement age. Now, another thing I want to note is as you are investing your dollars, I want you to practice the oxygen mask method. What is the oxygen mask method? When you're on an airplane and the oxygen mask drops, whose mask do you take care of first? You take care of your own mask first, then you help and take care of others. The same thing goes for your retirement because I know some of you want to save for college for your kids. You want to help your kids out with this and that, but you need to save for your retirement first, then you can help your kids after. There are no loans for retirement. There are student loans for your kids in college. You got to make sure that you are taking care of your own retirement 
first and then taking care of others in your family when it comes to college savings and the like. When you put this portfolio together, you have to have the right asset allocation. And your asset allocation, all that means is the mixture between stocks and bonds that you have inside of that portfolio. If you want a higher growth portfolio and you're still about a decade away from getting to retirement age, then having more stocks in that portfolio may be right for you. But if you are getting closer to retirement age, then having more bonds in that portfolio will make sure that your portfolio is less volatile over that time frame. So it depends on your risk tolerance and it depends on how much growth that you want when you put together that asset allocation. We have a number of different videos talking about things like the three fund portfolio and the Warren Buffett portfolio that you should definitely check out when you're trying to put together your portfolio and your asset allocation. Now, the third step is after you start investing your excess cash that you have available inside of your budget, it's time to earn more money. And earning more is the catapult to building wealth. Because if you can earn more money, that means you can put more dollars to fuel the fire so that you can get to financial independence faster. And this is why I'm so passionate about this. Because the more dollars that you earn, the more dollars that you start investing means the faster that snowball is going to grow. And once you build up this massive snowball, it starts rolling downhill and spitting off cash for you until eventually you don't have to work anymore. So investing as many dollars as possible is one of the most powerful things that you can do. So earning more at your day job is number one, meaning negotiating your salary that you earn at your day job is one of the most powerful things in life that you can do. We have a free ebook on how to negotiate your salary that I will link up down below so that you can check that out. But there is a step-by-step -step system that we follow. Number two is starting a side hustle. You can start all different kinds of side hustles now. And with the help of the internet, there are so many different things that you can start and build out into business as well. We have a bunch of videos talking about side hustles that we will link up here in cards so that you can check that out. But making sure that you are looking for ways to earn more money so that you can take that money and put it towards your wealth building ability is going to be one of the most powerful things that you can do. The last thing that you want to do as you go through this process is make sure you put together your wealth protection plan. And your wealth protection plan is putting together things like an emergency fund. So building out an emergency fund is an absolute requirement when it comes to building wealth. So having three three to six months expenses in cash in something like a high yield savings account is going to allow you to protect your wealth building ability. Because the last thing you want to do is if you're starting to invest late and you're starting to build wealth late, then you don't want anything to interrupt you as you're starting to build wealth. Whether it's a car breaking down, a health risk, any of these different things, you want to make sure that you have cash in place to take care of those things in case any of those things happen. So having three to six months emergency fund and increasing that over time as you get closer to retirement is going to be a very powerful thing for you you to do as well. I keep mine in a high yield savings account. Two great ones are Ally Bank and CIT Bank. So listen, remembering that it's never too late. Sure, it's going to take a little more work than someone who is starting in their early 20s, but it is never too late to start building wealth and you can absolutely do this. And I encourage you, continue watching our videos here at Master Money and we will continue to provide content that is going to help you and motivate you through this wealth building journey. You can absolutely do it. It is all up to you. But one thing I know for sure that is if you start today, you will not regret it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments comments below and don't forget to like subscribe hit that notification bell as well and we will see you on the next video